Paul Berman here, product training specialist uh, for HP with the Omen, and uh, we're just going to have a closer look. So um, tell us a bit more about the machines. Yeah, brilliant. So we'll start at the exterior because for me this is where this unit's really set apart from other things we've done from HP. Um, first of all, you'll notice the size. Uh, it's sub 20 mil thick, so it's 19.9 mil at its thickest point, which is the rear. You'll actually see that it has a slight incline towards the back, which yeah. is not only going to allow for great airflow, but also helps the ergonomics. Uh, for a gamer or for those who are spending a lot of time in front of their PC, uh, fatigue is, is certainly a, a major major factor. Yeah. So we've slightly elevated the rear to keep it cool, but also to help it perform well when using it every day. Um, underneath, you'll notice a few changes as well. Um, a rubber foot is going to keep it sturdy, but there's a small cutout at the front and the rear to help direct airflow from the front to back. Yeah. Um, this is channeled into separate intakes and a separate exhaust for both the CPU and GPU. Um, obviously, cooling and performance is paramount to our type of user for this machine, so keeping it cool is, is, is certainly something we've um, had in the design process. Uh, on the rear, the separate exhaust, the fans are controllable, so if you are expecting high demand or in a warm environment, you can customise it to your, your desire. Or if you're in winter time and you want to drill it. Cooling. Correct, correct. Um, you'll also find all the I.O. on the rear as well. So everything from four USB 3.0 ports to HDMI to display port, um, as well as your uh, headphone jack and of course the PowerPoint as well. Uh, number one for cable management, uh, but number two just gets it out of the way, especially when you're gaming or, or optimised for a mouse, um, or maybe a tablet or pen input, that sort of thing. So as we open the device up, we'll have a look at the unit I have here on display. Uh, number one, the first thing people are going to notice are the colours. So for us, this is something that is totally customizable depending on the user. Yep. So everything from the straight default red uh, across all keys as well as the speakers to individual sectors. So the right hand sector, the center and the left is all individually uh, changeable by the user. And not just to set presets, but to any color imaginable. Uh, even from the color code and RGB color value you can type in if you have that exact favorite shade of blue for instance. Um, along that, we've also made sure the W, A, S, and D keys are independently color changeable, uh, which is certainly the preference for a lot of our gaming community. And can you just bring that up on the screen? Where yes, that, where certainly. So we'll just minimize the game. Um, all of this is uh, accessed through what we call HP Omen Control. Um, it's a pre-installed app, which gives the user a centralized place to not only change and customize, but also um, view and evaluate all of the content uh, and the software and, and services within the product. So you'll notice when you first open it up, you get your key assignments. So for us, programmable macros or, or keys were certainly important for our user. So not only is there just the six here, the hard keys, but each one can then be uh, used by hitting control or shift or alt. So essentially you have up to 30 separate programmable keys per user profile. Yep. And then you can have as many user profiles as you like, um, depending on the customer. Sure. So let's change some of the key colors right now. Certainly. So we can jump into lighting, and then you'll see on the screen, it's actually a really nice UI which shows you exactly where everything is, is located. So if I want to change the programmable keys on the left, I click on that X to sector of the keyboard and then pick my color. So let's say I want to switch to green, then we hit OK, and that color changes to green within a second. Can you just change to something else? Sure. So let's, uh, let's go to pink, and then go OK and then it switches almost straight away. Sure, now we were talking about a thousand com color combinations, but I heard you said there's over a million. Well, I haven't counted personally, it's gonna take you a while, but as you can see, it's very much like a color grading you get within a lot of traditional. I mean, that's the traditional. It's a traditional Windows. I think Windows. it's been there since Windows 3.1 then. Almost, almost. <laughs> it's, uh, it certainly hasn't seen the light of day for too long, uh, but you find that you can change the hue, saturation, and the RGB color value. So if you have that exact favorite shade, and you really want to get specific, you certainly can. And, and uh, these can not only be set um, for each sector, but you can also have a user profile. So you might have a work in a play mode, and you might not want all the uh, out, out there colors if you're in the office all day, so you can just switch it to your different profile, and that could be a different set of colors, different set of programmable keys. So when you're in that work mode, you can switch it to work, and when you're at home playing, you can switch it to play mode. So where's the HP um, uh, you know, controller? I know you've got the mouse and you've got the the, uh, the bag, but how come there was no... Um, no, I, no, I do an HP controller as, at this stage, but being a Windows product, there's certainly a whole slew of gaming controllers that will not only work with our machine, but also enhance its playability, especially with racing games, that sort of thing, where you might prefer a steering wheel input uh, or something similar. Okay, thank you very much. Great, thank you.